What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to be learning about Instagram Graph API access tokens using Python. We're going to create ourselves a Facebook app and get an access token. We will exchange that short-lived access token, which only lasts for about a day, for a long-lived access token using a Python script. Long-lived access tokens last for three months. First script, when we're all done with it, it's going to give us an access token. Get long-lived access token. This is going to exchange our short-lived access token and give us a new long-lived access token. We're going to also write a debug script. Running this will give us all of the stats on the access token. We can get the um, permissions that we have. Here we have the stuff necessary for the Graph API. We have the user ID. It tells us the app that we used to get the access token. And this is the application that we set up on Facebook. It tells us if it's valid and when it expires. And at the bottom, we're going to convert that timestamp to a readable date. And we see we're about three months out here. The first thing we need to do is create ourselves a Facebook app. To do that, we're going to go to developers.facebook.com. Click on the My Apps, and we're going to create ourselves a new app. Click Create, confirm you're not a robot, and we should get ourselves an app ID. Then we're going to want to click on the Add Products, and we're going to want to select the Facebook login. Save those changes, and we can go to the Graph API Explorer. Over here in the Facebook app dropdown, we're going to select the app we just created IG Graph API Python. And we're going to generate ourselves an access token. If you continue, now we have ourselves an access token. However, we're going to need to add some permissions onto our access token. We're going to add Instagram Basic, Instagram Manage Content, Instagram Manage Insights, and Manage Pages. Generate access token. It's going to ask you to continue. And now, since we have added some of these Instagram uh, Graph API permissions, it's going to ask us what Instagram business account we want to use. I'm going to select mine and click Next. Once you select your Instagram business account, then it's asking you what Facebook page you want to use. I'm going to select my Facebook page and click Next. Last page, click Done, and it successfully has linked Instagram Graph API Python to Facebook. Now we have ourselves an access token. And in the dashboard here, you can also click on this little eye to get some more information on the access token. Basically, all this information is what we're going to be getting back in our little debug script. We have our short-lived access token. Now we need to start coding. The first file I'm going to create is a defines file. And this is where we're going to store things like our access token, our client ID, our client secret. Anything that we want globally defined, we're going to put it in here. The first function inside of the defines file is going to be a get creds function. This is going to be a dictionary of creds, and we're going to return it. This way we can call get creds from any file we create going forward, such as the two scripts we're going to be writing today. And we can get back our client ID, client secret, access token. It makes it easier because everything is in one place. If you have to update the access token, you just update it right here. And that's going to be the first thing we put in our creds dictionary. So we're going to go back to our Facebook app, the Graph API Explorer, and we're going to copy the access token that was generated for us and save it right here. After the access token has been saved, we also need to save our Facebook app uh, client ID and client secret. We're going to go back to our Facebook app, settings, basic, and we're going to copy our app ID, save it right in there, the client ID. We're going to show our app secret, and we're going to copy that and paste that right in the client secret. After that, we're going to define the base domain for the Instagram Graph API. The graph domain is just graph.facebook.com. Then we need a version. Currently, we are on version 6.0. To make calling things even easier, we're going to concatenate those two into an endpoint base. The endpoint base is going to be a graph domain plus the graph version. And we're going to do a slash at the end. And I'm also going to add in a debug variable here. And we're just going to default it to no. And we'll get to the debug later. Now we can easily get whatever we need in any of our scripts going forward by just calling get creds. The next function we're going to define is our make API call, since we're going to be doing that a lot. And this is just going to basically make a get request to, to any of the Instagram Graph API endpoints that we specify. So we're going to take in a URL. That's the endpoint we want to hit. We're going to take in endpoint parameters and then our debug. In order to make a request, we need to import requests. And we're going to be working with JSON, so we want to import JSON as well. Now we can make our get request. And to do that, we're going to use the requests.get. This is a get request. And we're going to pass along the URL and the endpoint params. This just makes a get request with the URL and the specified params, and we get it back in data. After that, I'm going to create my own dictionary, a response dictionary. This is going to help in displaying things out and debugging later on. 
in the response, I'm going to put the, the exact URL that we hit. We also want to save the endpoint params. Then for displaying things out nicely in the command line, we're going to do endpoint params pretty. Here's where we're going to use our uh, JSON. Make it look pretty. Do JSON.dump. And we pass in the dictionary we want to make look pretty. And we do indent of four. Next, we obviously want to save the data that we got back. I'm going to call this JSON data. And we're going to do JSON.loads data.content. And data.content is the content from the get request that we're making to the Instagram Graph API. Just like we wanted to make the parameters look pretty, we also want to make the JSON data look pretty, like this. Now we can easily dump this out on the command line when we get a response back, and it makes it a lot easier to read. And here's where our debug comes into play. If yes, we want to display API call data. And last, we're going to return the response. So that's our make API call function. Now we can just pass in a URL, parameters, choose if we want to debug or not. Send off a get request, we get the response back, we create our own response dictionary. If debugging is set to yes, then we're going to display this response out on the command line. And this function, display API call data, is what we have to create next. Our display API function is pretty simple, it's just going to be a bunch of print statements. From the response that we're passing in, we're going to print the URL, the endpoint, and the response. So that's our display API call data. All we're doing is printing out the response we got back. Our defines file consists of global things, and we're going to be using these functions in all the scripts going forward that we create. Back in our folder, we're going to create our debug access token script. Debug access token .py. First things we need to include are the functions that we created. From defines, import, get creds. We're going to import this function, and we're going to import our make API call function. Then we're going to import date time because we want to convert our uh, timestamp for when the access token expires into a nice date that we can actually read. So we're going to define our first function and it's going to be debug access token. Then I'm going to copy this comment block from Facebook. Here we have our API endpoint that we're using to get the to debug the access token. Here's the base, the graph.facebook.com slash debug underscore token. The URL variables are the input token and the access token. I'm going to set up our endpoint params. The endpoint dictionary is going to be all of the uh, URL parameters for the get request. First parameter is our input token. Our second parameter is our access token. These are going to be coming in through the params dictionary. For this, we're going to pass along our access token for both of them. Then we need to create the URL. Right here is what we're looking for. That's what we're starting with. And that is our graph domain. So we're going to say params graph domain slash debug underscore token. Now that our URL is set up, all we have to do is return our make API call. Here we're passing in our URL, these endpoint parameters, and then we're going to pass in debug. So the API endpoint, according to Facebook, looks like that. We created an endpoint params dictionary for all of the get variables, and then we created our URL, which is everything up into the question mark. Then we're going to call the make API call function that we set up over here in a defines file and pass along those things. Now that our function is done, we can call it and debug our access token. So here I'm going to define params as get creds. So I'm calling the function back from the defines file. This is how we're actually going to get our credentials. Debug, yes. I want to make sure that it's working. And then we can call our function and store it in a response variable. Here's where we actually call our debug access token function. And we pass in our params right here that we just defined. So let's hop over to the command line and see if our code works. So now in our Python folder, we have our debug access token.py, and that's what we're going to run. That looks like we have an error. Type error dump takes at least two. JSON.dump. Oh, I thought it needs to be JSON.dumps with an S. Back in our defines make API call, when we're trying to make it look pretty, it needs to be JSON.dumps. Try running that one more time. And success. We have gotten back debug info on our access token. Here's the make API call where if it's debugged, then we want to dump out the URL, all the endpoint params that we passed along, 
access token and input token, and here's the uh, response that we got back, our JSON pretty response. You can see the scopes, all the things that we set up on Facebook. It's using our app, our app ID, and we can see when it expires. Now we just want to print out the expires so it's readable. To do that, we're just going to do two print lines down here. Ported our date time up here. Now we can use date time and we can do from timestamp and we just have to pass in a timestamp. And that timestamp is data, data access expires at. So data and data access expires at. And that was all placed into our JSON data in our custom response that we created here. Response JSON data. Save that and we run our access token script again. Now we get a nice uh, readable date down here so we know exactly when our access token expires. And that is our debug access token script. Now we can finally get to the part where we get our long-lived access token. So I'm going to create a get underscore long-lived access token script. Just like last time, we need to import our git creds and our make API call function. Then we can define our get long-lived access token function. I'm going to copy the Facebook API endpoint structure, and let's take a look at it. Here we see our base domain is uh, graph.facebook.com, the graph version, OAuth, slash access underscore token. The parameters are grant type. Grant type of FB underscore exchange underscore token is required. That's telling Facebook, hey, we have a short-lived access token, and we want to request a long-lived access token. Client ID, our client secret, and the token that we want to exchange. I'm going to copy our dictionary from our debug script, and we're going to update it for this endpoint. Grant type is the first parameter, and the second parameter is client ID, and then we need our client secret. And the last thing we need is our access token. These are all going to be coming from our get creds function back here. Our client ID, our client secret, and our access token. Now we have to create our URL, which is everything up to the question mark. We have our base domain with our Graph API version, which we have set up over here as our endpoint base. So we're gonna copy that endpoint base from our params, and that gets rid of everything up to the OAuth, OAuth slash access token. Then all there is to do is return our make API call function. Pass in our URL we just set up, our endpoint parameters, and if we're debugging or not. All right, so the function is defined. Now we can call it. Copy a little bit from the last debug script. And instead of calling the debug function, we're now going to call get long lived access token. And we're just going to do some print statements so we can see our access token. All right, so we should see it debugging. We should see all the stuff that happened in make API call displayed out. And then we're going to see this little section right here where we're just showing the access token. Head over to the command line and run our new script. Python get long-lived access token. And looks like we did it. Our URL set up correctly, endpoint parameters, response right from the API, and then our nice little display down here, access token. So what you're gonna wanna do is copy this access token. I'm gonna go back to our defines file and we're going to place that short-lived access token that we were just using with our new long-lived access token. If we debug our new access token, we will see that now it expires three months into the future. That ex access expires at is this right here, and the expires at is zero. So we're getting that three months from the timestamp right here. Data access expires at. There's also this expires at, which is when the token actually expires. So this is saying this token never expires, but in three months we won't be able to get any data with it. So we probably should be a little more specific in our debug script just to clear up any confusion. This is data access expires at and then we will do access just say the token expires at and that's just the expires at key if we go back and to our short-lived access token in our defines file and we run this now you see the data access expires well that expires in the future a while but the token itself expires in one day so that's our short-lived access token Updating back to our new long-lived access token that we got from our get long-lived access token script. Debug that token. And that token 
says the data access expires in three months, not one day. And that is Instagram Graph API access tokens with Python. We created a Facebook app. We used the Graph API tool to get a short-lived access token. We wrote a debug script so we could get info on the access token. And then we wrote a script to get ourselves a long-lived access token, which exchanged a short-lived access token for a long-lived access token. And that is going to wrap up this video. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.